This video, sponsored by, Envato Elements. Hey everyone, welcome back to my After Effects tutorial. Today, we are going to create this. My heart rages around like an ocean in my head. I can almost feel you walking in the distance, but I know that is not reality. If you are echoing, so let's get started. Open After Effects and create a new composition. Let's call it Live Photo. I am using the 1920 by 854 resolution, with a frame rate of 24, to achieve the cinematic look. Now the first step is to import your image into your project. You can download it from the link in the description. Place it onto the timeline, and let's adjust the size of it. Open Scale and change the scale value, so that, it will fit perfectly, on our frame. Now, open position, and change the position value, to place the object into the center. Cool. Now we need to separate the object from the background. So the object will be on the separate layer, and the background will be on the separate layer as well. We can easily do it, by rotoscoping. Rotoscoping is the technique, of manually creating a mat for an element, on a live action plate. So it may be composite over another background. So, let's do it. Go to the tools, and select the Roto Brush tool. Now for using the Roto Brush, make sure to double click on your layer. And a new tab will appear right next to the composition tab. My cursor is also changed with the brush. This is the brush tool. And you can change the size of it, by holding the control key, and dragging your mouse. Now simply drag it onto your object. And After Effect will automatically add a selection, around your object. This roto brush works on the contrast. This image is having a light background, and the object is dark, so we can easily rotoscope it. Let's add the selection on the complete object. You can always change the color of the mask by clicking on this color icon. Zoom in a little, and here you can see there are a few spots left, which we need to fill up. Simply change the brush size to a smaller one, and then drag it over the area. Cool. Let's quickly finish this up, and now we are moving to the next step. There are a few points, which we need to remove from the selection. So, press and hold the Alt or Option key, and the brush color will turn into the red. Simply draw on the part, which you don't want to include in the selection. And it will remove it. There would be some parts, which are going to be so tiny. All you need to do, change the brush size to a smaller one. And then trace it over. Cool. Let's quickly finish up the leftover part. And then we will move to the next step. I am speeding up this process. Of course, you should spend a little more time, for achieving the perfect selection. Now, we will try to select the hair, as close as possible. We can do this easily, by switching to a different tool. So, go to the tools, and this time select the refine edge tool. This tool will be helpful in selecting the hair, and the small details part. Simply drag it over the edge of the selection. Wait for a little, and this is how it will look now. This is looking a little messy. But don't worry, this is just showing the selection in the alpha. All you need to do, click on this x-ray icon, to turn it off. And it will show the selection. You can always choose the look, which you want for making the selection. I am going with this alpha selection, with the red overlay. Because it helps in seeing the selection easily. Now simply, draw over the edges, to get the perfect detailing in the selection. Make sure to use only the smaller part, because this tool will take a lot of time. Let's quickly make the selection, and then we are good to go. 
cool. Now after finishing up the selection, simply click on this toggle alpha icon two times, and this is how it will look now. This is a really nice selection, and our background has been removed. Cool. Let's move to the next step. Switch back to the composition window, to see the final result. You can click on this toggle transparency grid icon, to check if the background has been removed. Now make a duplicate of this layer, and I am calling it Roto. Select the bottom layer, and rename it as the BG, or the background. Now select the background layer, and remove this Roto brush effect from it. It will turn into the default image. Let's hide this Roto layer. And now we are going to remove this object from the background layer, for making a clean plate. Select the background layer, go to the tools, and select the pen tool. Here I am going to add a rough selection around this object. This selection doesn't have to be perfect. But make sure to keep it as close as possible. This selection will be used, for filling this object. And the after effect will remove this object, and fill this selection with the sky background. And we will get the plain background image. Let's make a selection inside these hands as well. So that the output will be much better. Now select the background layer, and press M to open a mask. Change the mask to subtract. Now we need to remove these two mask selection from the first mask. So I am going to change both two mask to add. And this is how it will look now. Not bad. Let's minimize this layer, and then select it once again. Now go to the window, and then select the content aware fill. It is available only in After Effects 16. Hope you are familiar with it. Now this is going to fill the mask with the background. Let's quickly take a look at these features. The alpha expansion is going to expand the selection. So that the fill will be completely placed over the selection. And it won't show the aliasing in the image. I am keeping the alpha expansion value of 1. Now in the fill method, we have these three options. The object, surface, and the edge blend. The object method fills the transparent area, by synthesizing pixels. It comes handy when there is a movement, and the object is moving. For example car on road. The surface works the same as the object, but comes in handy when there is an object, which is not moving. It is just placed over the flat surface. For example poster on a wall. And the last one is the edge blend. It renders quickly and best for static objects, without any texture on it. Such as text on paper, or text on a flat wall. Let's go with the object, because it is going to work in many cases. Now for the range, I am going to choose the work area. Please note, the longer the duration will be, the longer it will take for generating the fill. As well as, the size will be huge for saving all those frames. So this is just an image you can simply take one or two frames. Let's go for three frames forward, and then press N, to set the end marker. Now right click here, and choose Drum Comp to work area. Now we have only three frames in our comp. Change the range to work area, and then click on generate fill. It will ask you to save the after effect file. So let's call it live photo, and then click save. Because we have only 3 frames, so it has been generated very quickly. As you can see, the fill is placed over here, and the object has been removed. Let's fit it 100%, and this is how it will look now. Let's turn on the roto layer, and then grab the fill, and place it right below the roto. Cool. Now we are going to render these images into different files, so that we can work on them easily as well as we can see the changes faster. So I am going to change the duration to one frame. And then hide the roto layer, so that we can render the background first. Let's render it now. Go to the composition, and select add to render queue. Or press ctrl plus M, on your keyboard. Now click on lossless, and change the format to PNG sequence. 
Also, change the channels to RGB plus alpha. Hit OK, and then click on the file name. Choose a location, where you want to save these frames. We only have the one frame, so I am going to save it, at the same location as my project. Click on render, and it's done. Cool. Switch back to the main timeline. And now turn on the roto layer, and turn off all other layers. Now we are going to render this roto layer only. Press Ctrl M, or Command M. Now click on the lossless, and then change the format to PNG sequence. Make sure to change the channels to the RGB plus alpha. It will be rendered without the background. Hit OK. And now click on this name, and then change the name to Roto. Click render, and it's done. Switch back to the main timeline, and then import the rendered files into the project. Now create a new composition, as the same setting as we have used before. Select the background layer, as well as the roto layer, and place them onto the timeline. Place the roto layer, on top of the background. Cool. Now we are going to add animation on the object. Go to the tools, and select the puppet tool. Let's see how does this puppet tool work. You actually add a few points on your object, and then you can move it by dragging any of these points. It works the same as rigging a character in your animation. But a much faster way. So let's do this. Simply add the puppets, on the joints of the person. I am going to add them right here. Also, I am adding the points on the joint of the hands. Make sure to use the exact points, where the body supposed to move, else the animation won't look real. Cool. Let's add some animation to it. Go to the end keyframe position, or wherever you want to place it. Now simply grab the points, and move them, like the way you want to animate it. Make sure to use the exact amount, till the object shape won't look unnatural. Let's quickly add some moment on it. And this is how it will look now. We have added this slight movement onto the object. And it is giving a sense of jumping. Now go to the first frame, and then open position. Here add a key frame on the position. I am going to change the Y position to 480 pixels, to align it to the center. Now go to the end key frame, and change the Y position value to 450 pixels. So that it will give a sense of jumping up. Cool. Now let's create some depth into the scene. Create a new adjustment layer, on top of all layers. And call it Lens. Then go to the effects and the presets and search for the CC lens. Apply it onto the layer, and then go to the first keyframe position, and change the size value to around 120. As well as, change the convergence value to zero. And then add a keyframe on it. Go to the end keyframe position, and change the convergence value to 50. Cool. Now we are going to add some simple zoom in, onto the objects. Select the roto layer, and open scale. Make sure you are in the first frame. Now add a keyframe on the scale. Then go to the last keyframe position, and change the roto scale value to 105%. As well as, change the background scale value to 102%. It will create some parallax effect. Cool. Let's move to the next step. Import the particles file into your project. You can download it from the link in the description. Place it right below the lens layer. And then change the mode to the screen. Also, open opacity, and change the opacity value to 50%. Minimize all layers, and now we are going to create a light leak. So create a new solid layer, I am calling it light. And then hit OK. Again go to the effects and the presets, and search for the fractal noise. Apply it onto the layer, and let's adjust a few settings. Change the contrast value to 200. And change the brightness value to negative 75. And then change the complexity value to 1. 
Now open transform, and change the scale value to a higher number. We are going to use this evolution, for making the light leak. Let's change the scale value to 1000, and then press and hold the ALT key on your keyboard, and click on the evolution stopwatch icon. It will prompt you to add an expression. In the expression box, type time, star, 120. It means the evolution is going to change by 120 times per minute. Cool. Now again, go to the effects and the presets, and this time search for the hue saturation. Place it right below the fractal noise layer, and then check this colorize option. Now change the color saturation value to a higher number, for making the vivid color. As well as, play with the color hue value, for making it orange kind of color. This light is not spreading nicely, so I am going to add a Gaussian blur, right below this hue saturation. Click on this repeat edges pixels, and change the blurriness value to 300, and it will make the light soft. Cool. Let's change the mode to the screen as well. Also, I am going to change the opacity value to 50. Cool. Check the animation, and now we are done. Thank you for watching this tutorial, good luck, and sayonara. Design video products faster, with Envato Elements. Get unlimited download, after effects template, stock footage, fonts, music files, web templates, and more. Visit the Envato Elements. Check the first link in the description.